In this video, we are going to discuss about the translocation in the phloem. It involves the transportation of organic compounds from source tissues to the sink tissues within the plant body. You know phloem is the vascular tissue responsible for translocation. That is the transport of photosynthetic products mainly sucrose and other organic compounds from source tissues mainly from mature leaves to the sink tissues throughout the plant where these materials are utilized for growth, metabolism or storage. Here in this diagram we can see the cross section of stem showing the vascular bundles. The green ones are the phloem whereas the orange ones are the xylem. In the same way if we see the longitudinal section we have the phloem in green and xylem in orange shown in the diagram. But we see the section through a root shows different anatomy. We see the xylem is in the center shown in the orange color, whereas phloem is shown in the green color. Furthermore, in order to understand it, we have the source tissues, which is primarily the leaves in the plant, where photosynthesis takes place and sugars are produced, mostly in the form of sucrose. Then this sucrose is transported to sink tissues, which is primarily the roots in plants. This translocation is necessary to help the plants in many ways like it's essential for growth and development, sports non-photosynthetic tissues like roots, flowers, fruits, buds and many more. And it works alongside with xylem which transports water. Now let's see the structures used in this transport. We have the sieve tube elements. These are the main conducting cells arranged end to end. Second is the companion cells that support sieve tubes, help in loading and unloading sugars. Third is mesophyll cells cells where the sucrose is produced. Fourth one is phloem parenchyma which aids lateral transport. Now let's get directly to the mechanism of translocation. On the left we have the xylem shown in the blue color and on the right we have the phloem sieve tubes arranged end to end forming a tube. If we look at the root side on the sieve tube we have the companion cell surrounding it. Then we have the phloem parenchyma and the root cells shown in the diagram. So this is our sink tissue. Now on the upper side we have the companion cells surrounding the sieve tube, then phloem parenchyma and then mesophyll cells shown in the diagram. This tissue structure forms as the source tissue because it's here where the sucrose will be produced. We know when chlorophyll molecules harvest the solar energy, the photosynthesis process is mediated from where we get the production of sucrose in mesophyll cells. So we have sucrose molecules within the mesophyll cells. This sucrose is then transported to phloem parenchyma, then to companion cells and finally reaches the sieve tube shown in the animation. This phloem loading with these sugars lowers the water potential in sieve tubes. Then water from the xylem enters sieve tubes by osmosis due to high solute concentration. This increases turgid pressure inside the sieve tubes. And eventually this pressure pushes the sugar solution through the sieve tubes towards the regions of lower pressure. That means movement occurs from source, that's from leaves, towards the roots shown in the animation. Then at the root region the phloem unloading takes place, where sucrose is transported to companion cells, then to parenchyma and then finally reaches the root cells. And in the meantime, water in the sieve tubes is sent back to xylem, lowering pressure at the sink end shown in the animation. So this is what the mouse flow theory says. Now we have the types of phloem loading, the symplastic loading and apoplastic loading. In symplastic loading, the sucrose is transported to nearby cells via plasmodesmata. That sucrose from mesophyll cells passes into phloem parenchyma, then to companion cells, then to sieve tubes via plasmodesmata. Whereas in apoplastic loading, the sucrose is loaded into sieve tube or phloem via cell wall space, not through the cells. So sucrose from mesophyll cells moves out of the cells and reaches sieve tubes via cell wall spaces. Here in this diagram on the left we can see the symplastic loading. We see we have the mesophyll cells, it's having sucrose molecules within it. These sucrose molecules follow a path via plasmodesma. They are transported to phloem parenchyma via plasmodesma, then to companion cells and then finally to sieve tubes. That means sucrose passes via plasmodesmitas. 
Then on the other hand, that's on the right, we have the apoplastic pathway, where within the mesophyll cells we have the sucrose molecules. They are sent out of the cell into the extracellular space that's within the cell wall spaces, and then follows a path within this uh, within these cell wall spaces, and finally reaches the sieve tubes. So this is what the apoplastic and symplastic pathways are. And uh, moreover, we see the symplastic transport is passive, relies on diffusion and metabolic trapping, whereas apoplastic transport requires ATP-driven proton pumps. In the same way, unloading occurs, where symplastic unloading is done via plasmodesmata, and apoplastic unloading is mediated via cell wall spaces. So this concludes the MOS flow mechanism. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. You can support me, work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.